Now, our culture, the white Anglo-Saxon culture, is pretty bad at seeing change. In Victorian law, when the automobile was first created, there had to be a man waving a red flag walking in front of the automobile to not scare the horses. That stayed in Victorian law until 2002. It wasn't enforced, but it was still there. We're very bad at seeing change, and our culture is particularly bad at seeing change. Let me ask you a couple of trick questions. What was the Roman numeral for zero? Anyone? There wasn't one. How do you have the decimal system without the number zero? The heart of our decimal system, the heart of our money, the heart of our counting system is the number zero. It didn't exist in Roman times. It does exist now. So surely one of the most important people in our history is the person who invented and perfected zero. Who was? We didn't learn it. A Hindu invented it in India, but the guy that perfected it was this guy, Al Horizamu, in a little town called Kiva in Uzbekistan. All right. Who determined the world was round, not flat? We learned Galileo. The problem with that is 200 years before Galileo, this guy, Mirza Ulugbek, did in his observatory outside Samarkand in Uzbekistan. Hang on, they're both in Uzbekistan. What's the big deal about Uzbekistan between about the year 900 when Mirza Ulugbek did this and about 1200 when he did that? Well, the Great Silk Road ran from Xi'an in China down to the Middle East and basically halfway between those two points is Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan was the centre of the world. Now we learned the years 400 to 1400 were the Dark Ages after the Romans left London because the world went backwards. The world did not go backwards. We did. Our culture did. Our culture lost knowledge. Our culture went backwards. The other cultures boomed in knowledge. Astronomy, mathematics, physics, science, and all happened outside our culture. So we have the cheek to think that Marco Polo discovered the Silk Road, the little route that he walked down in Pakistan. He didn't discover the Silk Road. The Silk Road was in existence for 1,000 years before Marco Polo got there. But we don't recognise it because our culture is really bad at recognising it. It's why we don't know who invented zero. It's why we still think Galileo discovered the world was round and he didn't. It's why we said the years 400 to 1400 were the Dark Ages and they weren't because the world didn't go backwards. The world progressed, but we went backwards. And we're making the same mistake today. Because we talk about China rising and we look at graphs like this. So, wow, the Chinese economy is picking up. It's soon going to pass the United States. Let me give you another phrase. China is not rising, it's returning. And why do I say it's returning, not rising? Because when I put the graph out to the birth of Jesus Christ, I get this. And you see, India and China dominated GDP until here. And then they dropped down, and now they're ticking up. Now, what's the drop down and what's the ticking up? Before the Industrial Revolution, individual productivity around the world was more or less the same. The vast majority of people in the world were subsistence farmers. And you had a small ruling elite and a small trading class, but everyone was basically the same. In other words, at the global level, your population size and your economic size were in alignment. If you had big population, you had big economy. If you had small population, you had a small economy. And then we invented the Industrial Revolution. And we just got lucky that our culture did that. And we had a huge boom in individual productivity. We funded the age of empire, transportation, founding of Australia and the United States. And then what happened about here, where India and China are at the bottom, more or less, let's call it 1950, we started the information age, where we basically took information about individual productivity and gave it to everybody. We set up factories in China, call centres in the Philippines, IT hubs in India. We gave everybody the knowledge. So now around the world, partly because of the internet, there is no comparative advantage in knowledge at the macro level. So, the reason China and India are now ticking up is because it's about implementation of the knowledge that's the same around the world. So I wouldn't say that China is rising. I wouldn't even say that China is returning. I would say the world is returning to balance, where your economic size and population size are returning back to alignment just as it always was. 
the norm of white Anglo-Saxon Christian cultures dominating global trade, glo dominating global politics that we think is the norm, actually is not the norm. It's only been for about three to 500 years. The norm is actually India, China, Asia. And that norm is based on demographics. And the moment you realise it's based on demographics and the world is returning to alignment where your population size and economic size are coming back to alignment, the fact that China's not going to dominate isn't because they're better than us or their culture is winning, it's the world is returning to the balance that it always had except this short-term spike around the time of the Industrial Revolution. So the culture of global trade is changing, just like it has many times in history all the way down the Silk Road. Uzbekistan. You choose to be in the middle of it, where all that great maths and science and astronomy is happening. There is no more a break between individual productivity and information. There's the global rebalancing between economic size and influence. There's a changing culture of global trade from the white Anglo-Saxon rules-based individualist culture back to the more collectivist culture that comes out of Asia. Now, I'm not saying what's right and what's wrong and what's better and what's worse. I'm just saying it's happening and get ready for it to be happening. 